Jones, and this is Overall Overtime on the Belief Network. Now enjoy my exclusive interview that I had with Bulls first Kevin Paredes for ESPN Anscape. The 19-year-old DC United and DMV product is one of the best prospects not only in American soccer, but in all of global soccer. I talk about him earning significant minutes in his first full season in the Bundesliga under new Wolfsburg manager, Niko Kovac, as well as his hopes for the 2022 and 2026 World Cup with the United States men's national team and off the field things that he enjoys that contributes to his love of the game in soccer. So before that interview begins, make sure you click that subscribe button at the bottom of the screen and enjoy not only this interview, but all other interviews on overall over time. So let us watch that fun discussion that I had with Kevin Paredes. And that interview starts right Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, we are here right here on overall overtime at ESPN. I know that I'm beneficial. I can't show my feelings. Been the women's tennis. Nowadays ain't no time for you to kick it. Been the school test. They don't say that I've been making bitch. I'm beyond that much. I've been down for seven girls and kiss. Hey, you throw the sex. Same in my service. Someone need to tell me. You can never hold a minute. What's going on, my man? Living in the shows live and direct. How are you doing, brother? How are you doing on today? I'm doing good, doing good. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Kevin, in terms of that growing relationship that you have with Nico Kovac and how he's trusted in you and been able to just be a regular in the team in the last few weeks of the season, just talk about his mentality, his personality, and how he's given young players like you a chance, as he's done at other stops in his coaching career so far. Yeah, for me, it's not been... All I can say is good things about Coach. Uh, he's trusted me throughout this process. He's believed in me and my development. Uh, he's given me the game time that, you know, that he says I deserve for my hard work. So, you know, being under him is, is, is great for me and uh, great for my development. He really trusts in everything I do on the field and off the field. And uh, yeah, he gives me that belief in the game so that I can come in and help the team in any sort of way I can. So it's just great things to, to be under a coach that believes in me. And believing in you to give you your first start in the Bundesliga against Bayern Leverkusen in that 2-2 draw. And you having to have a battle with Amin Adil and also Mitchell Bakker on that right side of the field. And how you were able to show what you showed at DC United. That ability in terms of knowing how to press. Being smart, being technically sound, and just being just all over the field. Can you talk about that battle that you had with those two? And in that whole experience of getting your first Bundesliga start, yeah, yeah, that was a surreal moment for me to play my start my first Bundesliga game and uh, matched up against two great opponents. You know, it was much more difficult than it looked. Uh, a lot of a lot of thinking. You know, I couldn't do as much attacking as I wanted to, but you know, I did my job in defensive work. I uh, showed great pressing, like Coach said, and uh, yeah, it was it was a great moment for me, and uh, I was happy to 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 make that step. And Phyllis and Metra, as you were mentioning, been so really important in terms of being like a good friend for you so far. And before the game, him giving you that little hat on the shoulder to loosen you up right there. And he almost found you on that through ball that was sent you in with that. You talk about that dynamic, not only with Felix, but also that moment where you almost was clear on goal in having that chance to get your first bonus league goal. Yeah, Felix is the top guy. Uh... This guy is funny. He's goofy. Uh, just being around him is just a good time. You know, you don't expect some of the things that he does or says, but that's just what makes Felix Felix. And, you know, he's a great person to be around. And, uh, yeah, in, in training, we and him have the great connection. And, uh, uh, you know, it ha almost happened in the game. I just didn't look up the last second to collect the ball. But, you know, he, he, found, he found me in the correct spot. And just, just the last execution. And it just it was an example of how if you watch that game and watch how you play the D.C. United, it's so refreshing where it looks almost that similar in terms of you playing at least in that attacking position and role and not having just to be playing in a left back. Not that there would be anything bad about that, but being able to say, hey, this looks like it translated from MLS. 
And you just talk about how really MLS gave you that preparation and how for a lot of people, it's a lot more, you know, difficult than maybe some would think that just watch the big five leagues in Europe. Yeah, I mean, that's prepped me for this this step in my life. And, uh, you know, thank, thankfully I, I got to do it with East United. What a great organization uh, I got to play, uh, be part of. And that's my family forever. And, uh, uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of things that, you know, may correlate to MLS may not correlate to Bundesliga. So just seeing different types of playing styles, different types of, you know, intensity in games was good for me to experience at such a young age uh, at D.C. And, you know, it brought me to the right step to come to the Bundesliga and, you know, show what I can show. And, uh, yeah, it's been a great, it's been a great journey so far, and I can't wait to keep going. And that love for Ben Olsen that you have, that manager that gave you that start, and how you talked about how he still give you some tough love here and there, but how he has that love for you. What's the last conversation that you had with him and just that bond that you have that he's giving you from giving you that professional debut? Yeah, Benny, what a, what a guy that guy is. Uh, <laughs> love that guy. He's like my – everyone everyone in the team, we always say that's my father. That's my second father because uh, the way he treated me and uh, the, the, mm. just the tough love, like I said, that he gave me was just like a like a real father, you know. Mm. But, yeah, the last conversations I would have, it was probably him obviously saying good, good luck and uh, throughout my next steps and stuff, but also uh, – Get, getting him some running shoes, uh, some Nike running shoes uh, that this guy loves to run. He loves to be active. He's he's always doing something. He he can't sit still or anything, so he always has to do something. And, yeah, the last conversation was me giving him uh, uh, a pair of shoes. He, you know, was part of this wave of having such great young prospect hopes back in his day in the D.C. United system, the likes of him, Aleko Escudero, Santino Carrada, and Freddie Adu among many, you know, promising DC United players and then having the academy with you set up with that. Can you talk about any of the experiences that he or Leco or any of those have shared throughout your time in DC United and how you're an embodiment of that culture that they built from start? Yeah, definitely uh I, I think the very first uh, player, uh, a former player that used to uh, text me uh, to this day on uh, my achievement is definitely Aleko. Mm. Uh, I remember the very first time that, you know, I got a, a message from him. I was shocked. I was like, wow, like a former legend at DC is, you know, uh, uh, conversating with me, telling me how well I'm doing to keep pushing and all that. And it was just great to see how uh, former players just encouraging the you, uh, the the youth and the, the younger generation and also uh, with uh, Marco Echeverri. I had a conversation with him. It, it was it was a crazy moment because these are, you know, the when you think of DC, you think of some of these top names and uh, just to speaking to them and um, them telling me how well I'm doing and uh, just to keep going, keep my head up and uh, keep working because big things are coming. It's just, it, for me, it's just crazy to hear that, you know, a small kid is just, talking to the, all, all these great legends of the club. So for me, it's just it's, it's surreal. And that surreal moment of you being D.C. United through and through was etched when you had your goodbye speech with the team back in late January and how deep that was and you just getting that round of applause. Can you just refresh on how just emotional, you know, that moment was and how the team was there for you on your speech departure? Yeah, it's, it's crazy because ever since, you know, I first started kicking ball, you know, the very first team, you know, is obviously like Barcelona around all these teams. But, you know, for me, it was D.C. United. And just to be part of, you know, their history, watching through the stands, it, it was just a crazy moment for me to be part of the actual team. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I was I, I, I watched a lot of the players that I played with and um, just, you know, leaving the family for a bit. It, it, it was kind of tough for me because mm -hmm. uh, they through thick and thin, through everything, they were there for me. Um, they gave me the platform to express myself, to to really show that who I am on and off the pitch. It was just, it was great. So you know, yeah, I did get a little emotional, but it it was it was good. And you know, it just you know was an embodiment of just the level of just love and just respect that you gotten from that club, and now getting it at Wolfsburg, being so firmly a part of the team with it. And as I mentioned, that one moment for sure, besides, of course, 
against Leverkusen when you were playing against Gladbach and having that battle with Joe Scally when you came on the field and how you were so close to scoring your first Bundesliga goal on another great debut appearance only for Jan Sommer and his world-class ability to just stop you from getting that goal. Can you talk about that combination and moment and how that just is an embodiment of how at 19 you already have this maturity about your game at the highest level? Yeah, it was... Yeah, I don't know how I ended up on the left side, but, you know, uh, my boy Kuba got it on the left side. He felt me coming, underlapping him. He gave me the ball. Mm-hmm. I took a touch, and I just shot it fast. I saw it from my angle. It looked good. It was going in, and I was thinking in my head, I was like, wow, I'm about to score. I am really about to score my first goal for uh, for in the Bundesliga for Wolfsburg. And then at the last moment, I see a little hand come and just block it and all that. I was like, wow. What, what could have been, you know, what could have been my first goal for a club. But, you know, it was great to um, also talk to Joe Scali. Seeing him on the field was awesome to see as well. You know, I, I used to play against him in the, uh, the youth academies when he played for NYCSC. So uh, it's not the first time I matched up against him. And, uh, yeah, we spoke afterwards. He's a great guy. He asked to hang out whenever. And uh, he knows how difficult it is to come um, by yourself to, you know, a foreign country. So, you know, great guy, uh, great player as well. And, you know, it's just something where for just to see that level of how his success at Gladbach, being able to see Bjorn do his thing in Dortmund whenever he's been on the field. And before he departed to Roberta Bremen, seeing Josh, before he departed to North City, Josh Sargent doing his thing at Roberta Bremen. And how you are right there in the thing of this with how you are so confident in your abilities and proving that with your hard work and the talent that you show, the pathway that they set, and how you're blazing your own pathway with that. Can you just talk about that from that American perspective of that next generation that you guys are building? Yeah, it's props to them because they how well they did in the Bundesliga, all these players that you just mentioned and others that you know really set the, the pathway for myself and other players. It's just great. Uh, you know, I'm just trying to replicate what they did, show great uh Great spirit, great games, and all that. Score goals, assists, all the good stuff that they they show. I'm I'm also trying to replicate that as well. And uh, you know, hopefully, younger generations also look at me like uh, I look like uh, uh, some of those players as well, uh, like an idol to them, so that they can make that step up as well. And I gotta tell you, uh, my God, Leroy City and Von Munich, he must think that he almost is seeing a long lost like brother from a other way, man, because from the hairstyle towards that left foot. And cutting inside, you have some of those traits like there that he has at his ability. Um, you mentioned with Lionel Messi being an inspiration. What other left-footed players for you have been that inspiration where you say, hey, I'm going to add this element towards my game and make this my own and establish myself as a top-class player globally? Yeah, definitely. When I was in D.C., I you know, the, the only player I could think of is just Alfonso Davies. He did it in MLS and comes to the Bundesliga, the same pathway that uh, I'm doing as well. I uh, would really say Alfonso Davies' creativity, his speed, uh, things he does on the ball and off the ball was something that I really looked at and idolized. Uh, I remember him scoring actually against D.C. Um, when I was at the stadium at one time. So uh, ever since then, I, I would like to watch his games. And, you know, to see him live was really, really cool just to see. You know, I was just at D.C. Now I'm watching him play, and hopefully I can match up against him in uh, these upcoming games. Have you ever had a chance to talk to Alfonso by any chance yet? Or? Yeah, actually I did. Uh, I, I talked to him after last season. We played Bayern the very last game, and uh, uh, it was a, we were saying uh, thank you to our fans and uh, – uh, one of our players knew we were signing through Man City. I asked him if I could speak to Fonzo Davies, and he was kind enough to come and talk to me. And uh, it was a very cool guy. He gave me his jersey, and it was for me. I was like, wow, this guy is. I was a bit. I was a big shock, and I was a bit. You know, uh, I was like, wow, it's really Fonzo Davies. You know, I was sometimes I was lost in words because of how well this guy does, and you know, he was an idol for me. So it was very cool to speak to him. And you talk about the fans because you just had to deal. A great signing session in terms of the fans over in Whisper. How has the fan experience been for you now that you're part of this whole team, now in a regular first team consistently, and this great vibe that they have over in Volkswagen Town there? 
Yeah, it's it's definitely growing since the first time I, I arrived here. You know, it's cool to uh, speak to some fans and interact with them. You know, the different styles of how, you know, U.S. fans would treat me versus German styles would treat me. It's just very cool for me to, you know, experience uh, great fans, great it's just great to be in the stadium with them. Uh, you know, their excitement, uh, their encouragement is just great. So, you know, hopefully I can keep uh, showing them that I'm here to play and I'm uh, here to win games for them. So it's great to it's great to be around them. And they've seen that maturity from you with how you have this perspective already of looking at the dates to day and not just like the week to week or like the whole year to year. That you have this day to day perspective that not a lot of young players have with it. And that also comes, like, unfortunately, with the calf injury that you had over the last week, just in terms of progress for that today and you being able to continue to recover from that and taking your time and just trusting in the process of just your own preparation and recovery. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You have to take it day by day. You can't think too far. You can't get too ahead of yourself. But any slip-up can, you know, cost you back for a little bit. And that's something I don't want. I want to be at my 100%. I want to feel good. I want to play good. And you can't do that if you, you're messing about or if you're, uh, you know, thinking too far ahead. And that's something where it'll probably be maybe like big tomorrow, Friday, in terms of that decision if you'll play this week and how that's still going to be determined at the end of the week, right? You would think so? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and still something that needs to be determined for sure is what will happen in terms of the World Cup roster, as mentioned with Ray Berhalter and next week in the conversations that you've had with him from over last year and expressing clearly that you have the attacking focus first as a winger first with it. But how's been the conversation with him since that moment and how Greg is a guy that you can be, really be clear with and him being able to accept that and not have any issue towards that when players are direct with him. You talk about the last conversation that you had with him as well as just this, any growing relationship with um, Ray Berhalter. Yeah, um, it wasn't too long ago that I spoke to him, but you know, the, the whole thing was pretty much just uh, to focus on myself, focus on, uh, like I said, day-to-day, getting better, getting more adjusted to the team, and uh, performances. Uh, you know, I made a big switch from MLS to Bundesliga, so... You know, at first, it's not all oh, you're going to play right away. So you have to work for it. And uh, uh, that's a conversation that he had with me that I need to work for it. I need to, you know, continue, you know, getting to that spot where I'm playing consistently and uh, working hard. And, you know, I, I really listened to what he said. I'm working very hard. And, you know, whatever the World Cup comes, uh, I'm ready. If not, there's always 2026 20, as well. I'm still young. I'm still learning. So happy with either decision. And for you, man, because of those great moments you had at D.C. United, that Stuttgart win when you were part of that build-up towards that wonderful goal in Stop and Shine, what for you has been the top moment of many top moments in your career? You can also include that Revelations Cup goal that you just ripped just now over the course of the last international break. Yeah, oof. It's a lot of great moments I've been uh, since I've been here. Definitely the Revelations Cup. Uh, this is my first goal scoring in uh, quite a bit of time. Uh, it felt good to score for you know the U.S. Um, but yeah, I definitely, I would definitely have to say, you know, starting my very first game for for Wolfsburg. You know, being on that field with uh, with the players and uh, just walking to the stadium and realizing I'm starting the game uh, and playing uh, played about seventy five minutes and. It was just a crazy moment for me to, you know, not many 19-year-olds can say that, mm-hmm. you know, that they just started the first Bundesliga game. So I cherish that moment uh, so much. And, you know, it was, it was crazy to me. And, you know, what's even more of a funny thing for you to deal with is that whole growing bond that you're having with your teammates. As I mentioned, of course, with you playing certain music in terms of the U.S. scene and music and getting them involved. I had your top five and wasn't able to get the second and third ones of the audio, but you mentioned little baby Drake as part of that top five with it. To complete that top five for your favorite music artist, who do you have in that top five of KP for it? Yeah, so Drake, of course, little baby, a boogie. Mm. Um, I said another one. 
I'm gonna put Burner Boy because a lot of the, the the my teammates have listened to it that I really enjoy it as well. Yep, you mentioned and, Pop Smoke too. You did and Pop Smoke, yeah. But those are the five top five. Definitely, man. With the A Boogie, shout out too, man. I mean, you get I know you DMV. You you got the New York love, North Corridor, man. All right. <laughs> Of course, of course, yeah, of course. That's major, man. <laughs> Two more questions before we get out of here uh, with that because, you know, it's just the maturity that you've, like, shown throughout the course of not only this year, but since you've been 12, 13, and rising the way that you have with that. So, you know, with this great cup of Wolfsburg, being in the Champions League, having Bundesliga titles in the past, and them really playing you towards your strengths, and really dedicating themselves towards you, you know, for the rest of at least this club season, you know, just the overall goals that you have personally to continue to push into the first team and just establish yourself as a Bundesliga regular for Wolfsburg. Yeah, definitely. My main focus is just continue to come in and uh, and, and be effective as much as possible. You know, give the team uh, extra energy when I come on and a uh, different, you know, point of attack. And, you know, that's my my goal right now. And uh, and uh, when Matt starts building on, I want to start scoring goals. And I want to make assists, some good plays. Uh, so that will help me uh, push into that uh, into that first team role. Mm -hmm. But uh, at the moment, just continue to, to work hard for the team. Anything that they need me to do, I, I'm there to do it. Um, offensively, defensively, uh, just helping the team in any way I can, and yeah, I know through consequences, uh, my time will come. My time will come at some point. How's the level of German for you? Because mine is just basically how low and how beat is in in this way of Luna's league and Spider League. So how how would you rate your German? You know, so far because um, it, it can be a process. And Gino Reyna would tell you it was a process for him. Yeah. It's so difficult. This language is very difficult. I, I tried to, you know, take some lessons here and there, but it just gets difficult. And sometimes I'm like, I just need a break from this. But you know, a lot of the team, my teammates rip me on for not speaking German because sometimes I'll speak German for a quick second. And then I next I start speaking English. So definitely something I need to improve on a lot. And just that level in that bond with Nico Kovacs, because despite, you know, him being intense and him having his great playing career, I would been Olsen and you being able to be coached by players that lived it and lived that whole experience. Any lighter size that Nico Kovac has because the turtlenecks, he likes to style out. He has that, in the, sometimes that personality that's charming. What is any lighter side that Nico has or Coach Kovac has that you can share that you know of there? Yeah, but every single time I, I speak to him, uh, it's funny because he starts speaking German or Croatian to other players, and then you know there comes me, and he's like, "Ah, oh, look, it's the American," you know. So <laughs> he has to switch over and start speaking English. So uh, I'll say that. Have you had a chance with how busy you've been over there, becoming a top class player at such a young age? For any of your DMV teams back home, besides DC United, I don't know if you were a Wizards fan growing up, if you got love for the Nationals or, or the Commanders, now named the Commanders. Who, who are your favorite teams in those other sports if you had watched them growing up? Definitely, uh, it's, uh, I play basketball a lot, so I would say the Wizards, big uh, Bradley Beal fan, so uh, please show support. And hopefully during this break, I can go back and go watch it. Uh, game from them so it definitely was the time you said and this is something weird for you have you been able because of the time difference like to see any game live or it's like nah homie I, it's just too tough right now <laughs> yeah it's, it's a hot it's definitely tough i can't maybe if i rewatch it the next day but to watch it live is it's just like 2 30 uh, a.m over here so uh, nah, i can't watch anything live being able to have your parents watch up early in the mornings, the conversation with them in terms of on Zoom, with the time difference. How has that been just the joy that you've given them back home? And when's the last time they've been able to come over and see you in person there? Yeah, it's it's been great. Uh, my parents are not much morning persons. My mom is, but my dad is not a morning person at all. But you know, my mom texts me as soon as I wake up uh, for game days, and uh, it's maybe, I don't know, 2 a.m., 3 a.m. for her, and she texts me, good luck, my baby. So, you know, it's great to 
yeah, I just love my mom so much that so she she does this thing and she always posts some pictures on her like, profile. So it's great to see. But my dad, uh, he he just he keeps it short and simple. The luck and, uh, and maybe I call him after or not, but it's mostly my mom calling me all the time. My dad's more, you know, if I'm good, <laughs> then he's good, you know. That's what it is. And uh, yeah, the last time we came was when I first came here. So we haven't been back since. Uh, we both watched the game. I didn't get roster that game, so we both watched the. We all watched the game, and uh, yeah, uh, I want them back soon. But uh, it, it's good to be alone sometimes, you know. <laughs> but yeah, it was my parents a lot. I mean, hey, at this time, you could have even off the college being alone, or just like this in terms of across the Atlantic. So at least you got that space there while still giving up that love all the way. And we know your dad, at least it was his friends are saying, my son is in the Bundesliga at 19 balling, the way that you all. And just one final question, because 30 was your number at DC, 40 is your number at Wolfsburg. You have 11 in terms of your national team, color at least a youth level. What's the preferred number for KP besides Bradley Bill's number three? And that's your love in terms of Bradley Bill. <laughs> Uh, I would definitely say, you know, 30 made a big mark for me. I, I really love 30. I wish I got 30 here as well, but it wasn't available. 11 is also nice. Uh, so like 11. But I think the one that I grew up uh, throughout my whole, you know, youth experience was definitely 7. So hopefully I can get 7 at some point. No doubt about it, man. Well, you're playing like the 7 in terms of developing that way, man. And, you know, shout out to Luca Goldsmith, who has number 7 at Wolfsburg. <laughs> All along with that, definitely with the quality player that he is. But for any team that you play in, you got the number seven mentality in terms of creating, scoring goals, and part of the buildup. And just continued success, man, and being able just to have that focus and have the love for the game that you have and just the joy that you're growing in Woodsburg at 19. No small feat for anybody around the world, let alone any North American player and you're blazing your own trail from the prodigy that you were in D.C. United and now maturing into a level of being a top professional, man. Give this man a round of applause. And you know, that this Appreciate you. Oh, yeah, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is Andrew Jones, KP40. Thanks for listening. We out. Peace.